Hey there, this is just a quick tour of some of the stuff I've been playing with as I've been working on some static websites. So the first thing you see on the screen here is a company called Stratic. And Stratic, if you already use WordPress, Stratic is pretty awesome. You set up an account, right, and set up a site. And uh, what you do is you click on here and you'll go to your WordPress dashboard. So it will function completely like WordPress, right? It is WordPress. So you'll be able to create blogs and posts and content and all that good stuff. But when you're done, right, and you, and you, and you finish and publish, what you end up with is a static website. So this is, even though you're, you're looking at it and it looks like, you know, it's, it's the blog and uh, all the stuff that looks normal, right? This is actually all static. There is no, you're not, you're not running back and, and hitting queries or databases. Um, this is just the regular blog, right? And so you can come down and look at the next guy and hit continue. So what happens is they apply their special sauce when they convert it from uh, WordPress to static, right? Now, of course, that's going to raise a couple questions for you right away. Like, what about my opt-in, uh, uh, you know, MailChimp or, or any other form like that at the bottom for people to subscribe and get on your email list? Well, the nice thing is most of your platforms, and in this case I'm using ConvertKit, will give you a little JavaScript line that you can put at the bottom of your post, and that's what's happening here. So I still get that interactivity. The other question you often have is, well, so what about uh, e-commerce, right? So this used to run uh, WooCommerce, but WooCommerce was pretty big for selling three eBooks on this site, right? So these three eBooks now are sold with another platform called Snipcart. Now you'll notice this is just a regular image, this is regular text, and then you get a button. And when I click on the button, you will see that I get my cart. It shows the stuff in here, right? I'd already pressed that once before and I can go into the next step, and I can go into billing and payment and all that stuff, right? That is pop-up from Snipcart. So here are the three books that I just I just got this configured a couple days ago, and um, it, it works gloriously, right? I come in and I define my products. They give me little bits of uh, code to stick on each button, and that's it. Everything else taken care of. I can come in here and, and define this stuff, and as you can see here, uh, you can do ongoing subscriptions, uh, you can do discounts and coupons. Obviously, the digital goods are where I load in all those PDFs. Um, so that that is the first piece of staticness, which is use WordPress, but have a host like Stratic convert it into uh, a, a static site, and you're all good to go, right? And and you can still do e-commerce, and you can still do uh, you know uh, email subscription forms at the bottom of your posts because you have things like ConvertKit or MailChimp or anyone else doing that. Now, the next bit of tour I did was I came over to something called StackBit, right? And StackBit lets you create, and I'll show you this in a second, but it lets you create a project, and, and here I have two different sites, um, and these are not WordPress, right? So in this case, you will see that the CMS for both of these, the content management system, is a system called Forestry. The actual... Uh, uh, solution that generates flat files in this case is Jekyll over here this is a view press and uh, when it generates those files it stores it uh, the source of it in github and it is hosted over at uh, netliffy right and so uh, you'll see two different sites if I click over here and take a look at view site here you'll see this is a website that uh, looks like a normal site right? This is ViewPress uh, that it that generates this static files, but these are static files. And I can come in here and take a look at this, come in and take a look at this post. And there's, you know, all, all the normal stuff, right? So you go, okay, it looks like a normal website. Um, that's awesome. Well, that's, that's that guy. Now, um, what's really happening behind the scenes, of course, is that you have uh, Netliffy is managing the deployment process, right? So even though you're storing the code in GitHub and you're, it, you know, every time what, what Netliffy is doing here is it's basically saying, let me find out when you make a change. So you can see here changes either in the CMS, which I, I told you was forestry, or if it was changing the code, right? So if I go into GitHub and I make a change to the code, it catches it. If I go into forestry, and make a change to CMS, it catches it. So this is the 
This is the guy that's coordinating, and what it does is it, it then does the work of running the scripts and process from whatever your static site generator is, and it pushes it out to uh, a place to store it, right? Or essentially the, the host. So um, one of the interesting things about that is that Netlify supports forms, right? So if you want to have a contact form, right, you can put a form by using this platform, right? Uh, and you'll see here all the deploys that happen from here. And you can, you know, if I come into overview, you can see domain settings, right? So you can bring your own domain over, which is what I've done here. So uh, that website, of course, is managed in a content management system called Forestry, forestry.io. And you'll see here, one of the things I like most about this is that the content editing, and there's a lot of different... Uh, headless or content management systems that um, will help you play in this static site generator. But this one feels the most like uh, the content pane that I'd want to type in, right? So you'll see the controls at the bottom here. Um, you'll see title and subtitle. This is all a specific content model, right? And I can go into front matter here and I can go to post and you can see this is the content model here. The difference here being that you can shape uh, the definition of content in all different ways, right? That's what forestry is allowing me to do. So I can say, well, this is what a post contains and this is what a page contains. And also here's what a featured section contains, right? So um, you can control a lot of that. One of the nice things is that in here, I integrated with a, uh, in fact, I'll go to settings and show you. I integrated with Cloudinary and Cloudinary allows me to use my account over here, right, which is, you know, Chris Lemma, um, it allows me to upload images from this forestry CMS over there and allows it to pull it back. The benefit of that is that I can then use uh, some rules in how I want Cloudinary to process the images before they come back to the site. So um, in the same way that we were, if I come back over here and I take a look at tips for later real quick, you will see this image right here, if I uh, inspect it, you'll see this path, right? And the path to the image includes AR underscore 169, C underscore fill, C scale, W auto, C limit, W 1000. I am actually having their engines process um, this image in multiple different ways, right? So I'm saying, hey, make the make the ratio be 16 by nine, make sure that the image fills that space. Then I want you to uh, scale it and make sure that the width fills the full uh, space. And then I want you to uh, limit the width to be a thousand pixels, right? So I, I want you to also condense or compress uh, the image. And so it's doing all this on the fly, right? Uh, which is fantastic because it turns an image that was like three or four megs into an image that's like, you know, 60 KB. And that's that's fantastic. So um, forestry allows me to integrate and make that uh, really smooth. Uh, and then of course I can come in here and I can create pages, right? Um, now, one of the things I wanted to do, if you come back over here, was play with this idea, right? I showed you in the other one how to, with Snipcart how to do uh, e-commerce, but what if I want to do a membership site, right? What if I want to protect content? So in this case, I, you know, the, the site here that I'm building is the best headphones blog. It's a blog about headphones. And imagine that I have a buyer's guide that is going to be protected, right? So when I click on that, you'll notice it doesn't take me to the buyer's guide because I'm not logged in and I, and it doesn't know whether or not I have an account. So here I, I can create an account. Or I can say, oh, I already have an account and it'll take me to the login. And if I don't, you know, if I don't remember my password, I can click here and it'll pop open the reset. And you go, okay, that's all, that's all not what I expect from a static site, static HTML, what have you. Well, because it's not happening there. Yes, I'm using HTML and I am uh, in, in these, you know, in some of these fields, right? If I come over here and I inspect this field you will see that I have added um, ms-field equals email, right? It's an attribute of this particular element. And you go, well, what is that about? Well, that's member stack, right? 
So if you go to memberstack.io, you can create, and what you'll see here, right? I created a basic membership. In this case, I made it free. I defined it by saying, hey, this is the protected content, right? And uh, and that's, you know, content that is, you know, not available for people who haven't logged in or don't have an account. And then where should I take people after they've signed up, right? And after they log in. And so this is giving me all that control for this membership. And, and I can come in here, right? And you can take a look at this and see, right, that it says, you know, let's connect it to a website, then let's talk about what content you're gonna hide. So if I come over here, right, I can say, hey, I want I want to protect on bestheadphones.blog, I want to protect this page. And I can do this page or I can do starts with. So, you know, you know that if you're creating a whole bunch of content, you could say anything with this path and everything below it, right? You can protect that. Um, hey, when they're denied, I should route them somewhere. Okay, where should I take them? So all of this is happening in a SaaS that's in the cloud. And then you'll see here, right? Profile and checkout, uh, this ability to take these particular attributes and add them to things. Remember I was showing you the uh, sign in and, and uh, the, the, the login, right? And remember I showed you what happens if I, um, uh, let's see, somewhere in here, log in, right? What happens if I need to reset the password? Well, it says, just put this attribute on that link, and that's how we saw the pop-up that said reset your password, right? So this is all done in the cloud, and you can integrate with uh, you can integrate with Stripe to collect money. Um, you drop in just a little bit of code. You can define the branding and all that. Uh, it is incredible, right, to think about trying to build a really lightweight membership system or a lightweight digital download system with Snipcart or MemberStack attached to a very lightweight static site generated HTML website. So that's just a quick tour of some of the stuff I've been looking at. Thanks.